Good afternoon. I'm Elliot Forrest from WQXR, live from the green space. Welcome to the annual event of the Avery Fisher Career Grants. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of the Avery Fisher Artist Program, who's also the Linda and Mitch Hart President and CEO of the New York Philharmonic. Please welcome Deborah Borda. Thank you so much, Elliot, and great to see such a big crowd. This is, uh, really shows how everything is coming back. So today is the announcement of the two, uh, 2023, I was going to say the 2003 career grants, but actually it's the 2023 career grants. I want to welcome you all here today on behalf of the Avery Fisher, fin wow, sorry guys, the Avery Fisher Artists Program, the Executive Committee, of the program, and of course the Fisher family who is with us today. A special welcome, we have a number of members of the executive committee here with us today. Our Guzalimian is right here, um, Chad Smith who's right here, and Mary Lou Falcone who's over there. So let's give them a round of applause. Um, I have two extra little shout outs today. One is that uh, four of the people who will receive career grants today are alumni of From the Top, and we have Gretchen Nielsen here today, the executive director of From the Top, and I believe a number of them have also attended the New England Conservatory, and I believe we have Andrea Callan, the president and CEO of New England Conservatory here with us. Welcome to New York. Now, in absentia, of course, we always thank Avery Fisher. Um, he loved music. He took such pleasure in identifying and developing talent. And we live through him today through these awards. Now, it's a rigorous process. I'm glad you're not at the executive committee meetings when we make our decisions. It's very raucous, a lot of fighting. A few people have been bruised, but we come out in total agreement at the end. Um, we select up to five different uh, instrumentalists or groups. And we think about a number of things, but three key factors. Are they really excellent, musical excellence? Will they make a significant impact? That's very important to us because we are all trying to make a difference in this world today. And finally, and this is the tricky one, is it the right time in their career? Because this gift can mean so much at certain times and perhaps not as much as at other times. Um, so. I think uh, we were very, very excited by this year's class. Avery, uh, who I had the privilege of knowing, really loved to announce these awards. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome and to thank the Fisher family, Nancy, Chip, and Philip Kirshner, his grandson and his children. And we're going to ask you, as per our tradition, to please announce the awards. Thank you so much, and great to see everybody. Thank you very much for those opening remarks. It's really something to stand here with these photographs of my father, our father here in the room. It always washes over me <coughs> when I come here. It um, has great meaning and memory. Um, I want to welcome everybody who's in the room tonight, music lovers, family, friends, um, <coughs> and anybody connected with the Avery Fisher Artist Program, and to all of those who are joining us on the live stream. Each year, our parents, Avery and Janet, would feel the excitement of announcing these career grants to the recipients and announcing it to the classical music world. The awards would be followed by the artist's performances and the opportunity to meet my parents afterwards. And then, of course, Avery and Janet would follow the awardees' concert performances with great pride. Their accomplishments would frequently appear in program notes. As one of three family advisors to the Avery Fisher Artist Program for many years, 
I have experienced the true depth of commitment by the 130 members of the recommendation board. Their confidential nominations provide expert evaluations for the executive committee's review. Members of the executive committee provide individual guidance based on their vast musical knowledge so that every nominee can be meticulously reviewed in the decision-making process, not by competition. Tonight, you will hear the result of our collaborations, their collaborations and recommendations. On behalf of the Fisher family, I want to thank members of the executive committee and the recommendation board who are here. Um, I want to thank them publicly for their continued devotion to the program. Thank you, Nancy. When our father established the Fisher Awards pr program, Avery Fisher Artist Award program in 1974, he made a strong statement about how important it was to support exceptionally talented musicians early in their careers. The career grants were specifically designed to offer recognition and support at a critical point in a young artist's developing career. The career grants currently provide each recipient with $25,000 in addition to the prestige associated with these awards. I now invite my nephew, Philip Kirshner, to make the official announcement of this year's awardees. <laughs> yes, I thought I was gonna have to bend down. Thank you, Chip and Mom. Um, it is a privilege to be a part of this wonderful tradition started by my grandfather, and it's a pleasure to announce the names of the 2023 Avery Fisher Career Grant recipients they are Nina Burnett, double bass, Bo Kyung Byun, guitar, Emmy Ferguson, flute, Evryn Ozell, piano, and the Isidore String Quartet. Congratulations to you all. presentation of the 2023 Avery Fisher Career Grant Awards. Tonight we're going to introduce you to four artists and one ensemble. We're coming to you live from the Jerome L. Green Performance Space. I'm Elliot Forrest. Here they are in alphabetical order. Double bassist Nina Bernat, guitarist Bo Kyung Byun, flute player Emmy Ferguson, the Isidore String Quartet, and pianist Evren Ozell. Let's hear it for all of the recipients. This award is in recognition of talent realized, achievement demonstrated. Avery Fisher himself created the conditions for these grants. It is not a competition. There's no application. Recipients are recommended, and the news of being selected comes as a complete surprise to each recipient. One qualification is that they must be U.S. citizens or permanent U.S. residents. Now, let's hear our first recipient. The New York City-based Isidore String Quartet formed in 2019 while its members were attending the Juilliard School. Violinist Mark Steinberg of the Brentano String Quartet said of this group, the music making struck me as something utterly sincere, imaginative, and insightful. I believe that they have much to offer our world of quartet playing. The Isidore String Quartet is off to an already promising start. Just last year, they won the 14th Banff International String Quartet Competition and have performed in a variety of venues, including Alice Tully Hall and Kennedy Center and the Ravinia Festival. This season, the Isidore Quartet returns to the Kennedy Center while debuting in Pittsburgh, Durham, San Antonio, and many more cities. They are also the resident ensemble for the Contemporary Alexander School and the Alexander Alliance International. Now let's hear them perform with the music of Johannes Brahms, the second string quartet. Please welcome the Isidore Quartet. The members are violinists Adrian Steele and Phoenix Avalon, violist Devin Moore, and cellist Joshua McClendon, the Isidore Quartet.
The finale from the second string quartet of Johannes Brahms. That was the Isidore String Quartet, live here in the green space from WQXR, the 2023 recipient of the Avery Fisher Career Grant. How does that feel? Amazing. <laughs> Who got the call? Who, uh, there's four of you. You can't call it one. You got a call. How, wh what did you think? Well, actually, I got a voicemail. I was, in, I was in Adrian's recital, and I got a text from our manager that was like, hey, maybe you should check your phone um, and so getting that voicemail and then getting the call afterward was was pretty surreal that's just great and tell us about the Brahms how do you decide what to play why why this today so we actually chose this piece as a tribute to our late coach Roger Tapping this was the first piece that we worked with him um, on as a group and he's been a great inspiration for us so that's why we chose this and uh, the name the Isidore uh, where to come from it's a two-pronged story. I'll try to make it quick. Uh, the PG answer is Isidore Cohen, um, the um, violinist of the Julio Trin Quartet and the Beaux-Arts Trio, um, pretty formative in the way we treat how we want to be a string quartet. Um, and the real answer is... Is this R or X? Um, I guess that's up for interpretation. But um, we were trying to figure out a name, and Adrian went down a sort of Wikipedia rabbit hole and found out that... Uh, Isidore was the monk that introduced vodka to the Russian czar. And we sort of met at the traditional chamber music greeting parties, which is no stranger to music and vodka. So it was a, it's a bonding force for all four of us. I, I always think those go together very, very well. <laughs> and uh, you're connected to the Alexander Institute. Tell us about that. Yeah, so one of my moms is actually an Alexander teacher, and she runs that school. So I've been kind of raised in that work. Um, and She's generously agreed to teach all of us it. So, It's a wonderful technique. Well, once again, let's hear it for the Isidore String Quartet. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next Avery Fisher Career Grant recipient started playing guitar when she was six years old and performed her first solo recital only five years later at the age of 11. Born in Seoul, Korea, she moved to the United States and began attending the Juilliard School when she was 16. There she received her bachelor and master's degree and then received her doctorate from the University of Southern California. Guitarist Bo Kyung Byun is the first woman to win the Joanne Folletta International Guitar Concerto Competition. Conductor Joanne Folletta has described her performance as stunning, showcasing her gorgeous tone, immaculate technique, and sophisticated musicianship. Please welcome Bo Kyung Byun. Uh, she is the only the uh, second time, the second guitarist ever to uh, be a recipient of the Avery Fisher Career Grant, uh, performing the music of Agosun Berrios, Bo Kyung Byun.
The Mazurka Passionata by Augustin Berrios, performed by one of the 2023 Avery Fisher Career Grant recipients, Bo Kyung Bian, live from the green space on WQXR. Beautiful, really beautiful. What do you want us to know about the piece? Well, this is by um, Augustin Barrios, who is known as the Paganini of the guitar from the jungles of Paraguay. And this really showcases the virtuosic nature of the guitar and the colors across um, the different strings. And yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, you grew up in South Korea, right? And uh, how did you pick the guitar? Um, I started with the piano very briefly and soon realized it wasn't my instrument, unfortunately. And we were just folding laundry with my mom one day and guitars popped up on the TV and I said, that's the one. <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> was it classical? Was it plugged in? What was it? My mom loved to say it was Segovia, but I think there's MSG to that. I'm not, I don't remember at this point. <laughs> um, you have something called uh, the Guitar Lab. Tell us about that. So it's an online intensive um, for young guitarists that um, is offered free of tuition. So the idea came after a conversation with my friends where I was talking about how difficult it was for me in Korea to attend all these festivals um, in the States and Europe. And there's this inequity and in opportunity. So we wanted to remedy that by offering this um, high quality online intensive. And um, I, I, at, Ju at Ju Juilliard, I think you worked with our very good friend Sharon Isbin, right? Yes, I think she's here today. Here though, there she is. We love Sharon. And uh, she started the guitar program at Juilliard, so clearly you were a part of that. Yes, and I was the first um, undergrad to attend Juilliard undergrad guitarist. And I remember on my first day in the studio class and she said, do not make a mistake because you're making history right now. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's, <laughs> but yeah, no, she's been my mentor and just um, idol this whole time. And the, the guitar itself, th this was custom made for you, right? Yes, correct. This is by a uh, German luthier, Dieter Müller, and usually the guitar scale is 650, and he noticed how small my hands were, and he offered to make a guitar that was slightly shorter, but without sacrificing any tone um, volume. Well, beautiful. Congratulations once again, and thank you so much for being here. Go <laughs> and beyond. I'm so excited to welcome our next uh, recipient back to the green space, uh, flute player Emmy Ferguson. Uh, she is deeply fascinated by both early and new music and has appeared as a featured performer uh, with Marlboro and Lucerne and the Ojai Festival, as well as part of the Handel and Haydn Society, uh, the American uh, Modern Opera Company, New York uh, New Music Ensemble, and many, many more. Uh, the New York Times called her second album, Fly the Coop. Box sonatas and preludes blindingly impressive, a fizzing deray, a display of personality and imagination. Uh, in case you didn't know, last year, Amy Ferguson was a part of our Artist Propulsion Lab, WQXR's program to support early and mid-career artists, an initiative we started uh, during the pandemic. I had the pleasure to work with Emmy when she uh, guest hosted for an evening on the radio as part of the Artist Propulsion Lab. She also brought her interests in music and, believe it or not, epidemiology uh, together for a podcast about the impact of syphilis and classical composers. <laughs> and if you go through the history, basically, and ask how this composer died, the answer is always syphilis. <laughs> Uh, and this month, Emmy has returned to the airwaves as a guest host on WQXR for our Young Artist Showcase. You can catch her behind the mic on WQXR in a couple of places. Emmy's performing with pianist Matthew O'Coin, no slouch he. Uh, Matthew wears many hats, composer, conductor, pianist, writer. Uh, he's received commissions from the Metropolitan Opera, Carnegie Hall, and the Lyric Opera of Chicago, just to name a few. Uh, Matthew is a 2018 Ma uh, MacArthur Fellow, one of the Genius Grants and is currently artist in residence at Los Angeles Opera. And he came in today with a suitcase because the moment he's done, he's off to something else. So please welcome Emmy Ferguson and Matthew O'Coin.
We're going to hear them play uh, Emmy's own arrangement of the Sonata Duo Decima by the Italian Baroque composer Isabella Leonardo, live on WQXR.
Live from the green space on WQXR, Music of Isabella Leonarda, the Sonata Duo Decima Opus 16, performed by the one of the 2023 Avery Fisher Career Grant recipients, flutist Emmy Ferguson, pianist Matthew O'Coin. Matthew, you can go catch your plane now. <laughs> Emmy, that was great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Elliot. It's such a pleasure to be here. So uh, you were on the radio with us, and you played this piece. Why is this piece important to you? Oh, well, this piece is incredible. So it's by a woman, a nun from the uh, 1600s. She lived till she was 84. She wrote over 200 compositions, and she was the first woman to write a sonata for violin and continuo, which is actually what you just heard. This is shock. Not a flute piece. Um, but we love stealing from the violin repertoire, and so I can't imagine a better one to, to bring to all of you this evening. And, and you did the arrangement, right? Well, we did the arrangement. You could see all the things that Matt was doing was improvised in the moment because it's a piece that is written for a uh, treble instrument and continuo. And I think the best way to describe that is that Isabella Leonardo built the house and then Matt and I came in and we did the interior decorations. <laughs> so, and Matt is like the best interior designer, as you can hear. Um, so all those filigree things that you were hearing was him in the moment reading the chord symbols that Isabella Leonardo put on the page and dreaming up these incredible, um, incredible things that then I get to respond to and we were just having a lot of fun with each other. It was uh, exciting to work with you because you and I chatted b before you went on yeah. the air and uh, gave you a couple of pointers He's and stuff. The best teacher. Uh, so You're my Tyra Banks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <she's laughs> she says you have to smile with your eyes. Yeah, yeah. And you told me I have to smile with my voice. That's so right. you're the Tyra Banks of radio. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I told her you can <laughs> hear a smile. And uh, yeah. It's so true. Yeah, yeah. You were great. And you've continued with that with us. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's such an honor to be part of WQXR's Artist Propulsion Lab last year, and I've just had the best time getting to make the QXR family my family, too. So thank you. Well, welcome to the family. Um, you sing sometimes, right, with your, with, uh, in, in, in compositions? Is that right? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. What, did, did that start before or after the flute? Well, um, my parents, who are here tonight, would tell you that that started when I was born, um, screaming, singing, you know, depending on what you <laughs> want to call it. Um, but I always really enjoyed singing, um, but only started incorporating it into my performances in the past seven years or so. We'll keep everything up, ladies and gentlemen. Emmy Ferguson, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations. Isn't this fun? Aren't you having a good time? How great is this, right? So optimistic for the future of classical music. I'm so touched by all these performers. Our next Avery Fisher Career Grant recipient is a double bassist, Nina Bernat. She has already appeared as guest principal player for both the New York and Israel Philharmonic. She's performed with conductors Gustavo Dudamel, Andra Schiff, and Osmo Vanska. She has quite a few awards on her mantle already, winning the Lillian and Maurice Barbash J.S. Bach String Competition, as well as the Minnesota Orchestra Young Artist Competition and the International Society of Bassist Solo Competition. Nina also has a passion for chamber music and has been part of the Juilliard Chamber Fest, as well as appearing with the Jupiter Symphony Chamber Players. Along with pianist Yoon Lee, please welcome Nina Bernat. Yoon Lee is on the faculty of Purchase College. She's a staff pianist at Juilliard. Uh, Nina has uh, the double bass runs in her family. We're asking her about this. Her first uh, father, her first teacher was her father. Uh, performing the arrangement of Chopin's Polonaise Brilliant, this is Yoon Lee and Nina Bernat.
Live from the green space, Frederick Chopin's Polonaise Brilliant in C, performed by the 2023 Avery Fisher Career Grant recipient Nina Bernat and Yoon Lee, pianist. Wow, I'm exhausted watching. <laughs> this is like the most physical instrument I think there probably is, right? Uh, it's probably one of them for sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as I mentioned, your, your dad was a professional player. Is that clearly the influence? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I grew up hearing him play and, and seeing him play and only took seven years of my life to decide that that's what I wanted to do. So, <laughs> I told you earlier that this was one of the instruments I played in high school and I was horrible. <laughs> it was just terrible. And uh, I just like growing up in Texas, just getting it inside my dad's Volvo was impossible. <laughs> Are you like on the subway with this thing? Tell me how it works. That's right. I do take the subway with with the bass, um, but sometimes I've helped, um, but oftentimes I, I can handle it myself. I have wheels, so it's, yeah. <laughs> so I'm uh, pretty sure Chopin didn't write that for bass. Um, where do the arrangements come from? Do you do it yourself? No, actually, this piece underwent a couple transformations before becoming the version that you heard today. Uh, it was first, the original version by Chopin was written for piano and then cello accompaniment. Um, and then a guy named Leonard, Ro Leonard Rose came around and um, decided the cello should be more the center of attention, <laughs> um, which is the version that you mostly hear today. 
And then my dad came around and decided the bass should be the center of attention in this piece. And that is the version that I play today. You do chamber music, you work with orchestras as well. Do you have a preference? What's the difference for you? Uh, well, they're, they're totally different. I mean, right now, I think what makes my heart happy is chamber music. And I just, I think closely collaborating with, with colleagues and, and making music is my favorite thing to do. Is there something special about this particular bass that you want to tell us? There's a couple special things about it. I think the most special thing about it is that it belonged to my father. <laughs> so, of course, um, we keep things in the family, and uh, it's, it's been an honor to be playing on this instrument for the past couple years. Um, it's also attributed to Guadagnini and um, is just the perfect kind of solo bass. It's petite, and it just... It's amazing to play on an instrument like this. This one's petite? <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, you got the call. What, uh, I just want to know your reaction from getting the call for getting the, the career grant. Yeah, so I had actually just gotten off of the subway on my way to gyrotonics class, which if you don't know what that is, it's like yoga, but uh, easier. <laughs> so I got the call and I was like so flustered because I didn't know where I, you know, when you get off the subway, you have no idea where you are. Um, and, and yeah, I was just kind of speechless and I, it's just such an honor. Yeah. Congratulations. Nina Bernard, <laughs> double bassist. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, one final performer, the South Florida Classical Review calls pianist Evren Ozell an exceptionally gifted artist. He has performed with the Cleveland, Minnesota, Jacksonville Symphony Orchestras, as well as prestigious venues like Boston Symphony Hall, Philadelphia's Kimmel Center, and New York's Carnegie Hall. He was handpicked by Mitsuko Uchida to participate in the Marlboro Music Festival. Uh, 2021 was a big year for Evren. Uh, that's when he won several competitions, including the Concert Artist Guild and was a recipient of the Salon de Virtuosi career grant. He's currently pursuing his master's of music at the New England Conservatory. Uh, we're going to talk to Evren and then hear him play. Please welcome Evren Ozell. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. So uh, you've done a number of different master classes under Schiff, Richard Good, Paul Lewis. Are there certain takeaways from these great pianists that you can share with us? Oh my gosh. I mean, um, you always get uh, incredibly interesting uh, different perspectives when you play for all these amazing artists. And, you know, it's, it's always such, such an interesting experience for me because I, you know, they're all pieces that I've worked on for a while and I've, I've put a lot of thought into them and what I think, you know, how they should go. And, and then I bring them to these, you know, incredible artists and Sometimes I just throw my ideas out the window and, and feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't see this or I didn't hear this. Um, so it's, it's, always, it's always a very special experience to play, play for such great artists and, and learn from them. When did you start? How old were you when you started piano? I was three years old. And uh, musical family? So um, my stepfather, who I met when I was five years old, uh, is a Polish pianist. Um, but other than that, no. And uh, the New England Conservatory, tell us about what, what you're getting from that or what you have gotten. Yeah, um, NEC, New England Conservatory, has been my musical home for nearly a decade now. I, um, I went to Boston in my sophomore year of high school um, and worked in a New England Conservatory Preparatory School, and then I did my undergrad there, currently finishing my master's degree. And um, it's always just been an incredibly wonderful, supportive environment um, that has been really conducive, you know, for me to work and uh, try and become as as good as I can. And you know, a lot of that is also thanks to my teacher, my dear teacher, Wa Kyung Byun, uh, at New England Conservatory, who I've been with since since 2014. What are we gonna hear? What are you gonna play? I'll be playing uh, Franz Liszt's uh, late piece, Les Jeux d'eau à la Villa d'Este, or The Fountains at the Villa d'Este. All right, well, go ahead. If you'll uh, assume the position there, I'll let you get settled in. 
and uh, congratulations again on receiving this award. Uh, we will hear the music of Franz Liszt, The Fountains of the Ville d'Este, from the Years of Pilgrimage, pianist Evren Ozell, live on WQXR from the Green Space.
Live from the green space, Lower Manhattan, WQXR, Everett Ozell, performing Franz Liszt, The Fountains of the Ville d'Este, from the Years of Pilgrimage. Let's bring out all of the recipients of this year's Avery Fisher Career Grants back on stage, the Isidore String Quartet. <laughs> Guitarist, Bo Kyung Bian. <laughs> Flutist, Emmy Ferguson. <laughs> Bassist, Nina Bernat. <laughs> and pianist, Evra Nozell. Congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here, thanks uh, to the staff of the Green Space, uh, WQXR team. We want to thank uh, the folks at Steinway for the piano. A big thanks to Veronique Verkushny, Deborah Borda, the Fisher family, and Avery Fisher. I'm Elliot Forrest. Thank you so much for coming. Good night.